Welcome to The Laws of Life. I'm your host, Blanca Greenstein, and today's guest is Charlene Doak-Gebauer. Thank you for being with us, Charlene. Thank you for having me, Blanca. And I just want you to know, if you are the guardian of a child in any capacity, if you're a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, Charlene is going to teach us how to protect our kids online today. This is a topic never discussed on the Laws of Life, so we're going to learn a lot. We are going live right now on the Laws of Life page, so you can practice going live for tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow night is the Laws of Life Women's Mastermind. We are going live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. This is your opportunity to connect to meet new people, to win prizes, even if you're in our digital audience. I really want you to all connect tomorrow night. That's what tomorrow night is about. That's what this show is about, learning, being inspired, supporting each other, and constantly extracting new laws of life. So Charlene, we are ready to learn a lot from you today. So my first question is, what made you choose to be an internet protection of children expert? We had an experience in my family. A family member was a victim by neighbors. And uh, she lived her life to the fullest. She, she ended up getting involved in the wrong crowd, uh, drugs, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 22, was killed by a drunk driver. Sorry to hear that. And as a network administrator, I was repairing a computer and discovered child pornography and knew far more had a better understanding of what she went through through that experience, which was very traumatic for me. So that is literally an incident in your life that caused you to do a shift in your profession. Yes. Because we're very fascinated by shifts in the laws of life family mm -hmm. and how to handle those. So was something calling to you that this was your purpose in life to do, to protect kids online? Yes. Uh, my sister's eyes, when her child had been killed, I knew she would never be the same. And I wanted to do something to help her and my family. And I'm a computer network specialist. I have been a specialist in a high school. And I decided to use it to the advantage of the family. I didn't know where I would start. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to turn such a negative into a positive. So what steps did you take? You formed a nonprofit organization. Yes. And what is, what is the name of it? Internet Sense First. And how do we find that uh, organization online? InternetSenseFirst.com. Okay. And what other steps did you take to, to work through this trauma? I researched the crime and could not believe the proliferation of it, how many children are victimized daily by it. Let me ask you a question. Um, as a parent of two teenagers, what, what, do you, what is the first step I must do as a parent to get in basic compliance with internet security strategies? The first thing is to be aware and communicate with your children. Too often parents are giving these devices out and not even checking what's going on. They're not asking their children. You asked for statistics earlier. Yes. Over 80% of children are stumbling upon pornography and a lot of children are addicted to porn. Parents do not know. But the majority of predators, a lot of them are between the ages of 11 and 15. The predators themselves yes, and are, pre are being a predator to other children. Yes, it's child-on-child -child sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And if parents don't start becoming aware and how to supervise their children, those statistics are only going to grow. So the first thing is conversation with our children. Yes. What, it, what do you recommend? Can you give us a few guidelines? What does that conversation look like? Well, first of all, you have to start talking about what they're doing online. Are they a victim? Are they a bully? Because children will communicate online far differently than they do across the dinner table. Parents used to play cards with their kids. They used to be far more active with them. Now the children are completely away from the communication of their children. They're on these devices. Parents are setting the example by being on the devices themselves. How often have you been at a restaurant and seen parents on a cell phone, their kids on a cell phone, and no one talking? All the time. I mean, what I hear you saying is the digital world is a beautiful thing. We love it. It, it helps make our universe bigger. It creates connectivity. But everything, you know, my father had a saying, 
the Socratic golden mean, everything in moderation. And mm -hmm. if you do something to an extreme, it becomes dangerous. Do you think that the ex this, this essential addiction, which we really do all have, and we're all guilty of, I mean, yeah. a, maj a great majority, you think it's hurting our humanity? Absolutely. There are too many children that are becoming desensitized to humanity. In fact, we have a, an event coming in November in London, Ontario, Canada for everyone. We have a specialist in online gaming who okay. said that in combat, people are told to shoot people in the chest, but in online gaming, they shoot them in the front of the head, which is unusual to combat. And we had an incident in Canada where three people were murdered by two teens that were addicted to gaming and they shot them all directly in the forehead. And the problem is the addictions to gaming. You believe that gaming can be a proximate cause of children becoming murderers? I think it's causing them to be too desensitized to humanity. We need humanity supervising humanity again. Uh, I have a theory of digital supervision which I developed. Okay. It's in three parts, awareness, method, and hope. Awareness is key. If parents knew that their child taking nudes of themselves and emailing them, and if they're under the age of 18 in Canada, the United States, New Zealand, any first world country, they're producing and distributing child pornography. And parents are not even reviewing the cell phones so that if you have the contract, which you do, you have to be 18 to have a cell phone contract, True. then you are in contravention of the criminal code. So the parent can be subject to criminal liability by yes. being the owner of the phone. So we're talking about multiple levels of responsibility and yes. protecting the parents. Yes. And it, it's tough out there. It's very tough to be a parent. It's tough because, first of all, we're all working. We're all doing, some of us doing multiple jobs, multiple things, so many expenses in society, and we are basically using the cell phone and the iPad as virtual babysitters. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I guess one of the things I'm getting out of this is we have to watch what's on our children's cell phones. That's right. And not trust what's on their phones, but look. Now, let me run this scenario with you. Your child is about, hypothetically, 11 years old. You say, I want to see your cell phone. The child says, Mom, you don't trust me. If you don't trust me, we don't have a relationship. I don't want to give you my phone, and I'm very disappointed in you, Mom, because you clearly don't trust me. What, what does the parent say back? What's your opinion? Then the parent should respond with, I don't trust society and your age level that you will make the right choices in life. You're too young. As a child at the age of 8, 11, 15 even, mm -hmm. they're too young to make these choices. They're seeing pornography, which is supposed to be aged 18 of years of age and older. Yep. As far as I'm concerned, no pornography on the internet should be free. I agree. And as an additional tip, I would say, you know, to tell your child that having a cell phone is a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. And they have to be in compliance and they have to turn over the phone maybe once a week. What, what's the right frequency in your opinion? Sporadic. What about the children? You said communication is a big part of your theory. Yes. But what about the children that aren't good communicators? quiet children, children that have tough time expressing themselves because they are young. They're the children that would be the greatest target for a predator. Predators are so sophisticated now that they can find their prey online and that's where they are. People think they're still in, in uh, malls, they're in school grounds, they're, they're everywhere. They're online now and sophisticated to the point that children sharing information online that they think is benign and, and quite safe, mm -hmm. they're sharing far too much online, which is why communication, training your children. Parents drive their children to school. They practically kill children driving them to school, yet they toss them a cell phone and an iPad and never look at what they're doing. That, that's very well said, because by, by watching the cell phone, by watching the computer, you're, you could literally be saving your child's life, literally. Exactly. And one thing, I've partnered with a company in Canada that has developed a filter with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And you can get that type of filter anywhere. Okay. 
but we're partner because we consider digital supervision and the filter to be interdependent. You need to have both. And I told the developers, I said, when you say filter to most parents, they think you're talking about filtering flour. They don't understand it as a device that goes between the router and the computer. Okay. If you're providing the internet in your home, okay. your responsibilities are profound compared to how people understand it. Where do we, you know, we're not all as, first of all, you've got a background in technology, mm -hmm. computers, and you were a former teacher. So you've yeah. taken all of these worlds together to become an expert. So educate us for a moment. How does one get the filter you reference? You just purchase it. It's plugged in between your router and your computer. Now that only covers your computer, mm -hmm. and it can cover Wi-Fi to a certain degree. What are your children doing when they're gaming? What kind of communication do they have? Because when they go on gaming, they're on a different server. Right. They're on the gaming server. What are your children doing when they're chatting? That's why we need, as parents, to investigate histories. What are they doing? Talking to them. And one thing that I advise parents to do with a cell phone, which is the biggest problem, mm -hmm. purchase a key logger, a comprehensive key logger. And the key logger will um, record every key that is depressed and any picture that is traded. And you can have that key logger report sent to you every day. Wow. And you just look through and see what it is. That's an incredible, incredible law of life. Where does someone find that to buy that? Product? You can buy them online. It's Where? a comprehensive. What would we Google to buy that? Key logger. Key logger. Google key logger and what does something like this cost? Mm, about eighty dollars. All in? All in. Eighty dollars to know exactly what's happening on your children's cell phone. I think that is a incredibly prudent investment. Now the one disadvantage is that the children may find out about it. If you stop getting the report, you know they did. And well, then you start telling them, We need to know what you're doing. And what I tell parents as well. What is on your, your cell phone that you're, you own, sure. you are responsible for. And some parents will say, I think that's an invasion of their privacy. And I tell them, but having the police come to do a search of your home after they realize that some pornography has been recorded by a minor is a bigger invasion of your privacy. Of course. I mean, this is, to me, so basic and every parent, every guardian, every grandparent should do this. Now, does this include Snapchat monitoring? The key logger on Snapchat will work. Like, okay. you will know what they're saying. Because that's the biggest challenge, because in Snapchat, it only lasts for 30 seconds, and then it automatically deletes. Oh, I'll tell you a story about Snapchat. Sure. It happened in, this is a true story in Canada. There were 15-year-old boys and girls, and the boys said, for me to remember you, I want you to pose for me nude in central positions. The girls did, and they did screen capture, which is permanent, and they were sharing it worldwide, and they were all charged with producing and distributing. And a lot of these kids think it's a joke. I speak in schools all the time. By the time I'm done, it's not funny, but I tell them, if you are charged criminally and your family wants to go to Disney World, you can't go. Absolutely. They're that will follow them the, for life. Follow the children and, and it will follow the parents. I mean, this has been extremely eye opening. And um, definitely look into the key blogger, Google that today. Let's all make, a, make an agreement to get that today. Um, so we've got communication, we've got awareness. What's the third piece of the formula? Hope. And we can do this. We have to do it for the hope of our children. This generation is being exposed to more pornography, hate, violence, um, cyberbullying than any generation in the history of the entire world. We need to catch up. We need to digitize our parenting. I couldn't agree more. And what is your position on cyberbullying and how to prevent that through your process? Uh, cyberbullying, for parents to communicate and to supervise, they will find out if their child is the bully or the victim. If your child is the bully, that is a conversation you need to have with your child. And it's happening too often. Hitting that send button is too easy for these kids. Well, I could probably talk to you for hours. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much. If anyone wants to learn more, purchase a copy of Charlene's book, Digital Sexual Victims, True Cases. 
learn more. You can also retain Charlene to be a speaker at your school at an upcoming event. And I hope that you learned something today. I know I did. Charlene, thank you so much for educating us about how to protect our children online and being here all the way from Canada. So let's give Charlene some South Florida love and a very big welcome. And thank you very much, Charlene. Thank you for having me. My second book will be published soon and it's referred to as The Internet, Our Children in Charge. I can't wait, can't wait to read this book. Thank you so much for, for being on our show today. Everyone out there watching live, thank you. Everyone out there, stay safe.